Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Day 12 of the bike build. footrests arrived I went for BMX stunt pegs I've had them on my lads when they were a lot younger on my lads bikes the BMX's and they're very sturdy they do what they're designed for I decided not to have a folding footrest on this bike. I wanted to use it as a multi-purpose foot footrest or foot peg. I wanted it to be very obvious, nice and shiny, sticking out from the bike. So there was no doubt about its purpose and no reason to put your foot on any other part of the bike. The last thing I want is any accidents. So BMX foot pegs arrived because the bike as a rigid back end I decided to mount it just behind the pivot point for the swinging arm my thoughts were if I mount it in this position and then my grandson grows to a point where it's not suitable it would be easy enough to just drill further holes in the swinging arm and move it to a new position the bolts used for the foot peg would would do adequately again there comes a point in every project when you have to start deciding how tight to make parts when you put them on and the footrests were definitely are fitted to last forever the last thing you want is a footrest coming loose or being unreliable if they had to come off then they could do but they're not going to come off inadvertently so footrests oh and they also have another purpose when i was an apprentice back in the 1960s i built a, a side stand for a race bike when I say a side stand, it was three pieces of tubing, adjustable, that I could slot over the end of a solid footrest when I came into the paddock on a race bike. If you just leave the stand laid in a suitable position near your van or trailer, when you come into the paddock after a practice or a race meeting you can just bend down still sat astride the bike put the temporary side stand over the footrest and it's tubular so it's not going anywhere 
there's no valuable race bikes gonna clatter on the floor once this stands on anyway getting back to the present if I can find that race stand in my garage and it's probably there everything's there if I look long enough then that's another reason to have a solid footrest on this particular bike plus it'll be a nice carrying on of tradition to use a stand I made on my first race bikes so we may see that in the future if I can just find it in the garage with the, the garage stroke workshop stroke junk shop So that's the footrest mounted, solid, never to be forgotten. <laughs> the fuel, as you, as you're probably aware, lots of this build has been done indoors. So that's another reason that's another reason I've never started the engine or put fuel in the fuel bowl or the carburetor fuel bowl which would be a simple job but I've resisted temptation because once you have a running engine the whole ethos of the bike changes in this instance I know it's gonna work I'll make it work there's absolutely no chance of it not working so starting the engine it will be interesting and exciting but it's nothing new and I don't want to influence the fact that I can work on it in complete safety in my kitchen on the worktop without any risk of fuel contamination or danger through fire explosions any other thing associated with petrol so I have given some thought to the fuel tank and I've ordered a very small flexible walled fuel tank commonly used in a model aircraft. I'm hoping it fits inside the large section, square section tubing that I've used to the down tube. I've got a few ideas for how I'm going to mount the fuel tank. More of that later when the tank arrives. I also decided I wanted a decent fuel tap for the future, so that's an order as well. And that's just a conventional on off tap, but these type of carburetors they have a very simple cut-off mechanism for the fuel flow and it only needs the slightest speck of dirt to keep the needle off the seat and the fuel bowl will constantly leak or flood so I want to I want to have a fuel tap fitted in the system so that when I eventually do fill the system with fuel that's the tank the pipe and the carburetor it'll stay closed if I want it to be closed or definitely open so it's a it's another regime 
that anybody owning the bike, my son or grandson, will get into the regime of turning the fuel off after using the bike and switching the fuel on when using the bike. So it's a handy regime to instill in any youngster when they're starting out. Don't trust tiny needle valves to hold the head of fuel, which is gravity fed in this case. When the vehicle's moving, any slight leakage may well be more acceptable than having it stood in a garage overnight with all the fuel pouring out through any leak in carburetor. So what becomes a problem of a drip when running becomes a major issue and fire hazard if it stood still and left overnight or for extended periods of time. So a tap short fuel line decent joint made and clean carburetor all helps enjoy the experience of owning this particular mini bike. Getting on to <clears throat> another part of the thought process of the bike build. Closing up the underside of the seat hump. The spin around photo I took the other day highlighted the fact that it looked a bit of an eyesore, the rear underside of the hump. So I fashioned a piece of alloy and when the pop rivets arrive this underside will be encased in this sheet of in this small section of alloy. It looked tidy and it'll finish it off. So we we're still at the thought process stage and that'll go on. We're getting to the point now where everything I do I'm considering how it affects other parts I've fitted. For instance, I ordered a chain and inadvertently ordered the wrong one. I ordered 8mm pitch and it turns out this particular variant has 6mm pitch chain. It's very cheap and I don't know how they can produce it for what they are so that's something else that will have to be reordered but and it, it was so near the pitch that I was able to lay it over the back sprocket and front sprocket of course and check my chain alignment and it was reassuring to see that it was quite close to where I wanted it to be. I also had occasion to take the back wheel in and out a couple of times and I'm very pleased with the the way that's all assembled and disassembled. It's an absolute dream. So Awaiting the postman yet again, see what turns up. Thanks for joining me. Join me again soon for another day in the build. Thanks for watching.